What's up, Focus Family? Hey, it's good to see you guys. Sorry we're late. Um, it's been a interesting, interesting day. Matter of fact, it's been an interesting week. I don't know what your week has been like, but mine has been chaotic and crazy. Um, the ups and downs with this weather has been a little, little crazy, jacking up my, my body and my knees and my nose. And just work's been a little complicated and family issues and school work and virtual work. You know, the normal stuff that we deal with here at COVID season. So I just want to start off in prayer because I don't know what you're bringing to the table, but I'm telling you right now that I'm bringing a mess. Um, my life right now is a little messy. I know it's all in God's hands. I haven't, uh, hasn't rocked my faith. It hasn't shook my purpose, uh, but I do want to surrender it to God. And I know, I pray that if you are coming uh, to us right now to join us tonight, you've got something laying at your feet that I pray that you can just throw it up and surrender to him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the opportunity to be together, to use te technology to our advantage, to reach each other through the airwaves. Father, I pray that whatever burdens we're bringing into this, this room tonight, Father, I pray that we can surrender it at your feet. I pray that you can soften our heart, you can open our, our eyes and unplug our ears so that we can hear your words speak to us. We can hear your whisper. Father, help us find that balance in life because life can be challenging, life can be a struggle, but you are not absent from us, you are with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, man, it has been a crazy week. Um, I want to uh, send some reminders out to you guys. Listen, the blessing project is real. We are all about getting out there in our community and blessing those that are around us. So listen, if you have anybody that you know of, an entity, a person, a family that needs a blessing, please reach out to us. Reach out to us through our, our, our Facebook page, our Instagram page, message us, our email reach out to us, let us know. We are so serious about that, that we want to get out there in our community and start blessing those in our community. Sometimes it's not about what is given or what is done. It's letting people know that they are loved. That is the important thing behind ministry. That is the number one thing behind ministry is to bring value to other people, to bring, to, to bring value and awareness to the love of Christ to somebody else. So we want to be out there and we need you because we can't be everywhere at one time or another. We need you to keep your ears to the street and see what people are saying and what people need. Uh, on top of that, check out our Instagram page. I believe we are streaming right now to Instagram. How are you guys doing? And uh, we're also got our YouTube page up and running where we're putting our old messages on there. So if there's something that hit to you, that resonated with you, that you want to share and you want to get it out there and you want somebody to see it, get out there, share it, refer them to our Instagram page, refer them to uh, Facebook, to, uh, YouTube, get the message out there. This is about community. We want community involvement. We need your community involvement. And it's about collaborating together to make our communities better. That, To me, that's the church. That is what the church is called to do. We are called to come together to be the church, not just in bricks and mortar, but as in you and me, to go out there and, and, and get our community moving and operating and working together. So we love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. So we are going to continue. We, we, we are diving into this whole mindset of balance. What is balance? This, this whole idea of, of the scales and the balance of, of life and, you know, the balance between what the world says that we need to do and, and, and what God says we need to do. And then sometimes we're on the up end of it, and sometimes we're on the down end of it. And if we're on the up, sometimes that causes us to look down on others, and that, that leads us into that judgment, um, that hypocrisy, uh, the, the anger, frustration sometimes, and looking at those and the judgments that we cast down. And sometimes when we go down, we're looking up and we're judging up. Isn't that crazy that even when you're on the downward slope, that you're still judging those that are up? And you're not only judging those that are up here, you're judging yourself. You're judging yourself saying that I'm not good enough. I can't ever balance out. I can't ever come up because I'm too dirty. I'm too lost. I'm too too broken. Or I come from this family or I have this skin color. Or I have this job. We we just, we, we this balance and, and it really matters. It really matters what is feeding your mind, what is feeding your heart. And so the whole idea is that the balance of life is what you've got to have. You have to have. It is necessary. The balance of life is grace and truth. You have to have grace and truth in your life. You got to be able to speak enough truth, but you got to be able to speak it with grace. You got to have enough truth in your life, and you also have to have grace in your life so that when you're living up here, you're not speaking all this truth down here where the people that are down here aren't receiving it. But if you're speaking it and helping it and living it through grace, you're level on the plane.
See, it's about finding that balance. And we talked, we focused last week on tolerance. Like the things that we tolerate in our life are things that we will often or we will pay for. And we have, we, we talked about the different movements. We talked about different uh, fads. We talked about the push for success, which we're going to talk about today. We're, we talk about all these different things in life and what we tolerate, what we bring into our life, what we allow to manipulate and to change, to form our opinions, our, our thought processes, all these things. Uh, what do you tolerate? And then ultimately what we got to at the end of it was it takes a transforming, a renewing of your mind. It takes a renewing of your mind to see what God has in store for you, to see his purpose. And when you think about tolerance, we, th we talked about the tolerances of this world, but we also talked about the tolerance of our God and what he tolerates and what he deals with. And the same forgiveness and grace that he has given you, he has given those that are around you that have yet to receive him. And it is our duty as Christ followers, to share that message and to bring them along and get them closer to knowing Christ. So we maximize and transform and use every opportunity that we can to, to share that blessing of God. So continuing our discussion and our talk with the transform, transformation to find true balance in our life, I want to focus tonight on success. And right now you're probably thinking, what balance? Really, seriously, what balance do I need when I'm in, when I'm in that season of success? Because when I'm in my season of success, I'm living my best. You know, nothing goes wrong when everything's at the top. Uh, I'm seeing things from a different point of view. I have plenty. I'm not wanting. Um, everybody, I have admiration. I have affirmation. I have folks speaking life into me. It's all good. It's all good. All is well. But here's my thing. Is it? Is it truly always well when you're at the top? When you're living that season, that life is success. When, see, when we're success, what's the big thing we try to do? What's the, when you're in that season of success and you're, you've reached the pinnacle of something or you accomplish something, what is the one thing that we, we do? I'll tell you what it is. We fight to keep it, don't we? We don't want to lose it. So we, we sometimes overlook our success, which could be a whole different message because we're so consumed with trying to hold on to the success. So we're fighting, we're clawing, we're biting, we're kicking, we're doing everything that we can to keep it. And so we become consumed with it and we're consumed with the success that we forget this. Listen, you, we've all worked for somebody that has gotten to the pinnacle of the business, of the, of the job or the manager or whatnot that forgot where they came from. We've all said that. We've all looked at that individual and said, man, they, forgot, they truly forgot where they came from. But you know what? They're just focused on that success. They're focused on keeping that success. Sometimes they're focusing on that success that they've forgotten those that got them to that success because it always takes a village to make somebody successful. I don't care who you are. There are always people behind you that are pushing you forward. There are always people uh, speaking life into you. There's always mentors, uh, people that are helping you. And so you've got to keep that balance. So we get consumed by that success and it, and it robs us and it messes up our balance. So when I ask you this, I want you to think about that. Whatever, wherever you are, where, whatever season you're in, whatever uh, company you work for, whatever season of your life, maybe you're at the, the bottom of the totem pole that you just started, or maybe you've gotten the promotion that you've always wanted. Maybe you're in the in-between going through classes and training, trying to obtain a specific certification. I don't know what it is, but <clears throat> whose success is it? I want you to think about that. Evaluate uh, when you think about whose success is it, even just simply stopping and taking a breath and thinking about whose success is it can ultimately sometimes even help you balance out. You could skip the rest of this message, turn it off, go watch some TV, see what ball game's on. You know, if you really define whose success is it, is it yours? Is it theirs? Or is it his? That makes a big difference on, on who you give the honor and the glory to. It, was it all you that did it? Was it all them that did it? Or was it all him that put you in the right place at the right time with the right people, with the right gifts, with the right purpose to make something happen? See, who defines your success is key to finding that balance. You know, by the world standard, if you go by the world, if you let the world judge you and you let the world tell you what your success is, you can be completely lost. I mean, the world tells you right now that there are no losers, right? The world says there are no losers. Everybody's a winner. Everybody's entitled to something. Every, we all, listen, if you, you may hate me right now and you may turn this off. I'm sorry. God forgive me. But listen, this world 
doesn't care how you feel. I tell that to our students all the time. Listen, you gotta, sometimes you got to go out there and do the dirty stuff and do the hard things, and you have to push through, and you have to accomplish things. You can't just give in to how you feel. You're not entitled to everything. you got to go out and earn it. The only thing you're entitled to is a salvation that Christ gives you freely, but it does take something. He says, I need you to obey. I need you to obey, and I need you to carry out my purpose. But see, we, if we listen to the world and what the world says about success, success puts us all up here puts us all up here and that everybody's up here and it puts us in this whole idea listen you know what i'm talking about if you're up here and you're living by the world standard we're always judging people we are the most judgmental culture ever you've been to walmart you stand there and you look at people in line don't you or you go to work and you're like she she shouldn't be wearing that or how about that guy right there what's he wearing uh or I listened to the announcer last night when I was watching my ball game. Like, wait, is he talking? Does he even know sports? Like, we, 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 we judge and we don't even know. But because we're supposed to be, we're all supposed to be so used to being held up here that we think the only thing that matters is me. We're selfish. That, that's, that, that it's all about me. And, and it starts when we're young. And, and, and before you are like me and the gener my generation and the generations before me that want to point fingers of who caused this, let me really quickly say that it is your fault, it is my fault, unless you are under the age of, let's say, 30, 28 maybe, everybody above that, it's our fault. Listen, now we've got the, we give a trophy for everything, everybody makes the team, everybody is successful, nobody gets cut, we all get the job done, we're all part of this, there's no bosses, There's you know, we're all unilateral, we all... We make all these ex exceptions because we're all selfish. Listen, because nobody wants to work. And I'm not saying that. Please hear me. I'm not attacking those that don't. Oh, I just messed up my words there. But what I'm saying is we have taken the importance out of doing. We have taken the importance out of, of uh, achieving, out of pursuing, out of being consistent and persistent to obtain something. We have taken away the accountability. We have taken away the responsibility. And when you have no accountability, you have no responsibility, you have no growth. You have no growth. See, this, this whole generation, my children, they're missing out on that. See, you learn more in the failure. You learn more in the losses. Why do you think your Heavenly Father, and yes, He has all the power in the world to pluck you out of whatever situation you're dealing with right now. He can pluck you out of it and put you in paradise if He wanted to. But guess what? He said, Ben, I'm going to let you walk through the valley because in the valley is where you are going to learn to rely on me because you're going to be looking up at the peaks and you're going to be wanting to get out to see the sun. But I need you to be in the valley so that you can learn how to work, how you can learn how to be persistent, how you can learn to be consistent, how you can learn to rely on me for everything. See, without that, all this protection we throw at our children and our youth, we aren't protecting them from anything. I, I learn more in my failures. I learn more in my pursuits. Uh, man, I cannot tell you that I, I applied for a job multiple times. I applied to be a deputy sheriff um, multiple times before. I, it took me two years to get hired on as a deputy sheriff. Two years. Lots of failures. I, 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 a long time ago, tried to go federal. I, I filled out uh, oh, probably six to seven applications. I went all the way through the process and got turned down every time. I remember sitting there looking at my family and my, my father-in-law like, how do you go all the way to the top? and then get knocked out and say you're not good enough. Talk about being in the valley, and I know I'm not alone in that. I know many of you have been there. And the thing is that I learned in the valley that right there, you know what God was teaching me? Because he said, I don't want that for you're pursuing success that I don't want you to have. Because that is not my vision for your life. And because I stayed consistent and I continued to pursue in that valley because I wasn't living my best life then either, you know, he still led me along. And he still helped me climb that mountain. And you know what? That doesn't mean that a valley won't come tomorrow. But I need that failure to remind me, to remind me that it's not about me, it's about him. It's not about the world, it's about him. It's not my success, it's not their success, it's his success. It's all about him, and it's got to be all about him. No accountability, no responsibility equals no growth. No growth, no success. See, the world wants to tell you participate and win. You know what God says? You know what, what Jesus says? Jesus says, receive. Receive it and do. Receive and do. Receive and do. He doesn't want you just to participate and claim a victory. 
He wants you to receive and he wants you to go do. And the more that you go do, the more that you learn. And the more that you learn, the more that you grow. And, and even when you step out the door to go do, doesn't mean you're not going to have some doors slammed in your face. But every door that closes is another door that's open to opportunity. And you've got to continue to pursue it. See, it all begins with Christ. It all begins with Jesus. It, it was his to begin with. It will be his in the end. He just gave it to you to fulfill the purpose that he designed for you. Let me tell you a story. See, see, he wants us to go out and be the grace and the truth and the light. He's the grace and the truth and the life. He wants us to be the grace and the truth and the, and the, and the light, to be a beacon that also displays and shares grace and truth to find that balance, to help others find that balance. There's a story in, in, in the Bible that talks about a rich man, a rich young man that approaches Jesus. He goes to find Jesus. I'm giving you some cliff notes right here, and then I'll read you some of it. But he goes and seeks out Jesus. This is a man that was already successful, already successful in a hard world to make a living. I mean, can we not say that, yes, this world is hard, but there's definitely a lot of successful people out there. There's a lot of people, uh, the middle class is, is large. Uh, I mean, even folks like my grandparents and their generation, you know, the middle class was small. Now the middle class is large. Well, you're talking about a culture where, man, they were hardworking people. Went out there with their bare hands, went out and did amazing things, created things, did things, worked things, sweat real, I mean, real deal work. This man was successful, and I'm sure he worked for it. I'm sure he did what he had to do. But he approaches Jesus, and he has this amazing encounter. And mind you, this encounter is not chance. And he, and he asked Jesus something. He, he asked Jesus. Let me tell you what he asked him. He approaches Jesus, and he says, Now a man came to Jesus, and he asked the teacher, Teacher, what good things must I do? to get eternal life. So, so right off the bat, we know that this is a man who, uh, that loves God because he's pursuing uh, the other thing. He's pursuing eternal life, the eternal prize, the, the end of the race, the thing that we are all trying to endure to get to. This man knew about it. And so he's asking Jesus, like, how do I get it? How, how, do, how do I find that? How do I, t how do, see, here's the thing. And for you that have success out there, Lots of people look at you, right? So let's go back to our little balancing act, right? Let me balance my Bible here so it doesn't fall. We got our little balancing act. And some of those that are down here are looking at you who are up there. But you know what? They don't ever get to look behind the curtain, right? Kind of like the, the Wizard of Oz. And, and the wizard's back there, and he looks all mighty, and he's all powerful. But you open up the wizard, the, 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 the curtain, and it's just a small little guy speaking in this big thing. That movie freaked me out when I was a kid, but that's just a pretty cool representation. But think about that. People look at you like maybe you run a business. Maybe you uh, own a local restaurant, so you've got a lot of youth, youth working for you. And they're looking at you and how successful you are, and they want that. They want that. But they never open up the curtains to see what was behind it the work that it took to get there. See, nobody opens up the curtains to see the mess or to see the failure or to see the work, the spills, the accidents, the wrongs, the ouches, the pains, the suffering, the, the labor, the losses. Nobody opens up the curtain to see those things. They just see the success, which is a good thing for you to remember up here because if you are up here, if you are a leader, a good leader is always training their replacement. You are always bringing somebody with you. A good Christ follower is always bringing somebody with you. And then hopefully more than just one, that you are continually doing it. So Jesus, you know, Jesus replies to him, and it may catch you off guard. Jesus says to the man, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. For you want to enter life. If, if you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Obey the commandments. And so he's saying success is surrender. Obey the commandments. Success is surrender. Serve, obey, relent. Um, last, not first. Others, us, we, together. Not just you, but them, everybody. Bring them with you. See, we put all this work into something and we, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and we simply sometimes are just called to surrender. You're just called to surrender. And, and do your thing that way. So the success is all him. And so the success is all about, you know, I'm trying to say, sometimes we get so focused on that success that sometimes it's the success isn't all about just getting there, right? It's not all about just getting there, but it's what we do while we're there. 
what you do while you're there. It's not all about just getting there. It's about what you do while you're there, what you do with the opportunities that God has given you, what you do with each individual that God has placed in your life, what, he, what you do with um, that which is placed in your life. It's success will continue, continue to come and go throughout your life. So we've all had those, we've all had good jobs, we've all had bad jobs, we've all had good experiences. This week's been a bad experience at work, but I've had amazing experiences at work. And so because I have that balance, I made a little balance it out without a rock in my world, even though it was a bad day. You know, so Jesus continues on to him and says, uh, the man looks at him and says, which ones? You know, isn't that a logical question? Hey, obey the commandments. Hey, which ones? And so Jesus responded and says, do not murder, do not commit adultery, don't steal, don't give false testimony, honor your father and mother, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your, he gives him six things, six. He's not even naming them all. He just says six. Do six things and you, and that's what you need to do. And so let me tell you how bold this man was. This man looks at Jesus Christ, and you don't even have to know Jesus intimately to be like, whoa, dude, dang, you responded to the Lord and Savior that way? Like, he looks at Jesus, and he says, well, hey, I've done all those things. I'm good. I've done all those things. And so I challenge you that are in that moment of success in your life, and you're thinking, I've done everything I can. I promise you there's more. I 100% promise you there's more. And so this man believed that he had reached the pinnacle of his life, and now he's just seeking. Hey, he's ex I, I, my opinion and my thoughts, of my own personal thoughts of this man is he is just waiting for Jesus to say, hey, you've already done it. You've done enough. You made it. You made the cutoff. You're in the book. You got it. But that's not what he gets. That's not what he gets. That's not the response that, that Jesus gets uh, or that he gets from Jesus. See, success Hear me when I say this. Success often exposes our weakness. Success often exposes our weaknesses. And so Jesus, with this successful man, exposes his weakness. He lets him know where he is short. And he says to the young man, he replies back to him. Uh, the man had said to him, he says, I have kept all of these. What do I still lack? And Jesus answered him, if you want to be perfect, Sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and heaven. Then come and follow me. Sell everything you got and then come follow me. Listen, this is not, a, I'm not telling you to sell all you got. I'm not saying that you got to get rid of everything. What I'm saying, what I believe that this scripture is telling us is Jesus wiped away the dust, the dirt and the grime. And he exposed the weakness of this successful man. He exposed the weakness of this man and identified his problem. Because right here, the man couldn't let go. Success was his idol. Wealth was his idol. And he held on to it. Because Jesus goes on to challenge the man. He says, Jesus says to him, um, uh, when the young man heard this reply, when he heard what Jesus said, he went away sad. He, he, he went away sad. He didn't stay to continue to talk. He went away sad. He went away defeated. See, that, that exposure of that success, success was his idol. He was up here and success was all he wanted. That is all he needed. And his wealth, and he couldn't give it up. Sell it all. And see, Jesus already knows. And he already knows. He already knows what you're holding on to. He knows what you won't give up. He already knows. And he knew this man would not be able to give up his wealth. Give up and sell all of it. And follow me. And the man turned around and he left. And so here's my call to you. What is it for you? What is it for you? What can't you give up to follow God? What is holding you back right now? And I'm and maybe it's trivial. Maybe is it your car? Can't give it up, right? Your home, I can't give it up. Right? Your income, I can't give it up. Maybe it's maybe it's your position, your 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 the position at your job, your position in your life. No, I can't give it up. I can't give it up. Your time, I can't give it up. How about your spouse? I can't give it up because it's not about her either or him. I can't, I can't give up my kids. I can't give up that friend. I can't give up that bottle. I can't give up that pill. I can't give up that money. I can't give up that habit. I can't give up that thought. I can't give up that computer. I can't give up that job. I can't give up that habit. All these different things that are.
and follow me. See, that idol, whatever it is, is holding you back like it held the rich man back. That idol is holding you back, and it is rocking your balance because you know what you want, but you can't get it because you keep getting dragged in, and you're not ready to give it away. You're not even... How the Apostle Mark tells this story. Uh, the Apostle Mark, his, his, um, his, um, he identifies with the way Jesus approached this man. And I wanted to share this with you because this is how Jesus is, is approaching you right now. This is what he's doing. He approached, listen how he approached you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not judging you because I'm with you. There are things, I will tell you right now, I struggle with pride. Pride is my sin. I, I, I'm a people pleaser. So it, pride is a natural leech that latches onto me that I want to be successful, but it's not about that. It's about so much more than that. But look at this, just like Jesus looked at me years ago, he's looking at you right now. Jesus looked at the at him, he looked at the man, he looked at the rich man, and he loved him, and he loved him. And he said to him, one thing you lack, go sell, and then he gives him the whole instructions, go sell and follow me. He looked at him and he loved him. He looked at him and loved him. He looks at you and loves you. He loves you right where you are. See, he is speaking from a position of balance because Jesus is grace and truth. He entered the flesh as grace and truth. He is the balance. He is the one that can set it right. He looked at the rich man and he's looking at you out of love because you're his. You're his child that he's equipped and he's pursued. He's guided. He's molded like a piece of clay. And he knows what you can do. And for you that are down here and are selling yourself short, he's telling you are good enough. You are acceptable enough. You can get up. You can come up. You can find balance. He's for you up here. He's saying, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Come down to your brothers and sisters. Find balance. Cross over over the bridge. Bring them with you. Come together. When I look at the church, this is what I see. And sometimes when I look at the church, this is what I see. And then I see them looking, we look down. We look down and we judge. When the whole idea is to go baptize, not just baptize, baptize, teach them to follow me. Teach them to follow me, to come. Balance, grace, and truth. See, it's, oh man, what, what's your success worth if you're in it alone? See, I know a lot of successful people that are lonely. See, it's all about success, or is it all about the purpose, right? Is it all about the success, or is it all about the purpose that's behind the success? Read these stories all the time. Look it up on Google. Get your phone out. All bunch of, a whole bunch of lonely, successful people that, that got all the way to the pinnacle, but they're all by themselves. They didn't bring anybody with them. There is no balance in their life. Yes, they have plenty. Yes, they have a lot. Yes, they do whatever they want. They got the Lambos, the yachts, the mansions. They go to Italy. They do all those things. But they, man, the true value of life is people. The true value of life is community. The true value of life is love, balance, grace, and truth. Success. See, it was all about the success and not the purpose for some of those. And I want you to think the difference. There's no balance in that. I want you to find balance. You can be a good husband and a good wife. You can be a good mother and a good father, a good daughter and a good son, a good coworker, a good friend, a good neighbor. Uh, a good community member, a good church member, good volunteer. You can be good and be successful. Find balance. Find balance to the success. Guys, man, I want you so bad to experience that. Focus up. you got to focus up. community to help others get where you want them to be or where he wants them to be and we are the instruments and the vessels that he's going to use to help others reach that 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 purpose to reach that goal let me pray for you heavenly father thank you so much Man, it has been a difficult week. I know that you are not absent from it. I know I'm not the only one. I know that there are people watching this and that will watch that, this that have been struggling and fighting and clawing and, 
and, and, and in the grime and in the dirt, Father. And I pray that you can just dust them off, clean them up, uh, just wash them off with your amazing and wonderful grace, Father. Help us, Father. We can hear you and we can love you, Father. And then we can step out and start doing and not just talking about it, but we can start doing it. Father, if we are in seasons of success, that we look at those that, that are lacking right now, we can reach back down to help them. And if they're down here, Father, I pray that they can reach up to help level that playing field out. Father, we are all meant to find balance. You tell us that you want us to have hope. You want us to have peace. You want us to experience love. You want us to experience community. Father, we are the vessels that are going to accomplish that community. Father, empower us. Help us. Strengthen us. Give us wisdom. Give us words. Give us the strength to carry out your actions, the things and deeds that need to be done. Father, give us the courage to be counterculture, to do the things that need to be done. Father, help us find balance. Help us find balance in the successes of our life and not forget where we've come from, not forget who success it really is. Father, speak through us, use us, and help us come together. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, you are awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's so good to see you. We are still working for some future stuff. Hope to have some Bible study stuff out here to you guys soon. We're hoping to have us together as a community, face-to-face, -face, sometime in the near future. But remember, keep your ears to the street. If you find some folks that are in need, reach out to us, let us know. We want to be out there blessing. If you want to contribute contribute to our, uh, reach out to us through email or our Instagram or Facebook posts. Um, guys, we love you. This is about community. I pray that you, this message receives you with grace and truth and focus up, focus in so we can focus out. I love you guys. We'll see you next Thursday at 630.